Hello everyone and welcome to Journal for Jills. My name is Lewis and in today's episode of JFG Meets, we have former Jills player, coach and manager Steve Lovell on the show. Obviously, unfortunately, due to the current coronavirus pandemic, we were apart when having the chat, so it did have to be a phone interview, but do stay tuned for inside stories on Steve's playing career, his transition into coaching, being a vital member of the Gang of Four at Gillingham, life with AD Pennock, how it was to finally get his dream job, what happened when he left the club last season, life now at Absolute United and much more. Enjoy. So I'm now joined by a former Gillingham um, coach, player, manager, Steve Lovell. Steve, thank you for coming on today. Um, you you yes, keep yes. keeping well in the, the whole outbreak at the minute. It's obviously not positive times right now, but um, keeping well. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's, uh, everything's fine. Uh, got lots of family, which obviously everybody has. I mean, we can't see them at the moment, but... FaceTime is taking a hammering, so um, <laughs> that's uh, that's the only way we can uh, uh, we can stay connected at the moment, which is uh, disappointing. But you know that's the way it's got to be, and uh, hopefully this uh, this thing will uh, clear pretty soon. Absolutely, yeah. So I, w- I wanted to start start off with your playing career. Actually, um, it was a bit before my time, but um, I've got uh, I've got family that that saw you play. I've, I've obviously um, internet tells a lot of stories as well, and obviously knowing being a junior fan myself, I know pretty much the history anyway but what got you into football in the first place um well my dad was a professional footballer mm. and um uh, obviously he wanted me to to take after uh following his footsteps which um he used to take me coaching and done in wales um and uh, i went to a rugby school actually so i never played football in in, in school it was all rugby i used to play football outside school right um, but then I did the two on the side. They would play rugby and football, one in the morning, rugby in the morning for the school and football in the afternoon. Right. And um, so I, I, I did it through, through a local football club um, and then got um, playing regularly, uh, got trials uh, for the Welsh team, the Welsh schoolboys, uh, under 15s, um, and I got scouted at um, 15 years of age, um, uh, by Crystal Palace, could have gone to a lot of clubs. Uh, could have gone to Manchester United, Man City, Tottenham. Oh. I could have gone in uh, a few clubs, but I I picked Crystal Palace because um, my mum and dad, we they had family around the area, and they were, would be happy that I would be leaving home and going to spend, uh, be happy in in my uh, with family members up in uh, Croydon or okay. Palace. So I joined I joined Palace and. Um, Went there uh, when I was 16 and signed apprentice at 16 years of age. Obviously spent, obviously, Palace, your first club. I'm assuming you've got a, a soft spot for them now. How was your time at the club overall? It was uh, it was brilliant. We um, we won the, the FA Youth Cup uh, two years running uh, when I was 17 and then 18. And a lot of them players came through um, the youth section uh, and played uh, in the first team at Crystal Palace, went on to have good careers, have brilliant careers. Um, the likes of um, Vince Soler and Kenny Sanson and Ian Walsh. And there was loads and loads of us who came through the, the, that team and had uh, good um, league careers. Um, so I ended up staying there for seven years um, and, and then um, moved, uh, moved on to Millwall from there. Oh, so I'm, le- I'm led to believe that um, at Palace and for a bit of Millwall that you, you started off as a midfielder um, yeah, and then you, you started banging them in up up front for Millwall and just stayed there from then on is that right? Yeah when I was at uh, when I was at Palace I played in every position really I I, I could play it anywhere and I filled in uh, at any position on the field and sometimes it was uh, against what really uh, uh, what I, I should be doing because then I never really got a, a regular place in the team because I could I, I was quite adaptable and and could play anywhere. Yeah. Um. But then uh, George Graham um, moved from Crystal Palace where he was there with me to Millwall to manage, and um, he signed me. He signed me as soon as he went to um, Millwall. He signed me from Crystal Palace, and I went across with him, and um, uh, he turned me into a, into a centre forward basically. Yeah. Um, and obviously, then you were involved in international football as well. Do you remember getting your first call for the Wales team? Yeah, uh, I do. It was um, funny enough. I was um, I was at home uh, watching match of the day or something, and uh, 
And something came across on on the, on the, the telly that night saying that I had to report to the hotel because obviously in them days you didn't have phones and mobile phones and things and yeah. so no one could get in contact with anybody and I just had to rush from that house all the way um, down to the hotel and we were, we were I think we were playing in um, Russia or playing away somewhere in a, in a, um, a World Cup qualifier or something so I had to jump on a uh, uh, jump in the car, get down to Heathrow, and oh, wow. uh, meet up with the rest of them, and uh, and then fly out with the rest of the um, the group on the Sunday. And how was that in terms of um, overall um, your first taste of international football, balancing that of club football? Um, it did never change because at the end of the day, it was a game of football. You were, it was great to represent your your country, and um, you know a football environment is a very unique uh, environment where. You know, the banter that goes on and the, the laughs that you have and the, the people, the characters of people. Um, so it was, it was no different to going in, into the Welsh team and, or being with your, your normal group every day of the week. Um, but it was, you know, it was great to be involved with, you know, the likes of, uh, players like Ian Rush and Mark Hughes and, you know, people like that who were uh, Neville Southall and, you know, it was, it was fantastic to be a part of, uh, um, an elite group of people, really. Yeah, some great, great stories there. Um, you went from Mill to Gillingham, which sort of began your long-lasting love affair with the club. Um, yeah. And I think it's fair to say, for quite a while, you were the main man there. Um, mm. What are some of your memories at Priestfield as a player? Um, I remember, I remember signing uh, from Swansea, and I came. Uh, from, I was going to sign from Swansea because I went to Swansea on loan yeah. uh, from Millwall. And uh, Terry Orth, the Swansea manager, wanted to sign me right. on the Monday. On the Monday, um, and on the Sunday before that, I got a phone call from Keith Peacock, uh, Gillingham manager, and said, "Look, come and sign for us." Right. So uh, I, I, we were living already where we are now in in Raynham. So we would have to have moved down to Swansea if I wanted the signs for Swansea, obviously. Okay. But Gillingham was literally on the doorstep. Yeah. And all my uh, my children were in school. My wife had settled in the area. We all settled, and we didn't really want to move back down to Wales. So um, we, um, I spoke spoke with Keith Peacock, and then signed signed a contract with him. Um, with for Gillingham, um, and then that was brilliant. And then on the I think the day after I, I signed, I got injured right. uh, in a in a match. We we uh, Keith Peacock ordered a um, a match for me, ready to get ready for the Saturday. We played Brentford, yeah. And I, I remember getting injured in it and being out for a while. Right. Um, so that was really disappointing, and people were saying I was a. It was. I remember an article in the back of the paper saying they paid money for me and I was a crock, and I never played for the club and all this and all that. Um, so that was disappointing. But then, so when I started, I, I, I remember playing, and I, we played um, uh, South End um, the following season, and I scored four. And we, we um, early on in the season, and um, we won eight eight nil. So I scored four, yeah. and scoring that first goal there was brilliant because you know people had thought that you know I couldn't do it. I was never gonna. Uh, get back to what I did at Millwall again, and uh, it just proved that I, I could, and uh, went on and, and scored. Like as I say, I was top scorer I think for four seasons. So yeah. it was um, it was great. You know that that's what started off really that first goal against uh, South End, and then uh, to go and score four and then, and take it on from there. And just going back to when you said you were potentially going to sign for Swansea and you didn't want to move mm. your family, etc. How much of an impact do you think? Um, so, like, so for, for example, say uh, a twenty-five-year-old player, he's playing in Germany, he's an elite, elite footballer, he's got his family settled in Germany. Manchester United, yeah. Manchester United, going for him, and they say, "Oh, we're going to pay you two hundred grand a week to play for Man United." Yeah, the fans yeah. might think, "Oh, that's great, let's sign him." But how much of an impact does it actually have in terms of moving your family, etc., abroad just for mm. a change of a club? That's the biggest thing. I think one of the biggest thing. I think if you're happy, if you're happy away from the, the training ground, you're going to be happy on it. Um, and I think, you know, it's, there's a lot of promise football players who have suffered because of that. You know, they, they'll go to clubs and they're away from their family or, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's got their different ways of dealing with things and some people can deal with it. But, 
you know, I, I, I know I wouldn't be happy being away yeah. from my family um, and, and training and playing and going back to a hotel room. I, I wouldn't be happy doing that. So yeah. that is going to be a, a so that will impinge then on my training and my uh, and my my game. Um, so you won't be getting the proper most probably me. So yeah. I, I think everybody's different. They've got their own way of dealing with things. I think it's different now because the money is so great now. It, you know, there's it, so much money involved. That, that little things like I'm just talking about don't even come into it. Yeah. Because they can move the whole family, like the money that they're on, they could move their whole family and buy a house within a, a day and get everybody all in and, and it's all done because of, of the, the money that's involved. Yeah. Obviously, that back in the day when the money wasn't, you had to sort that out yourself. Yeah. Um, and it would take ages, so you'd be away from your family for a long time uh, if if the family moved at all. Yeah. So you know, I think that's that's a major thing now. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. That's that's fair enough. It seems obviously um, you you went into coaching. It seems your transition into coaching was pretty pretty smooth in terms of um, the mo- the move to Sittingbourne, etc. Do you think that's a fair statement? Yeah, I I I'd done my I'd, when I was at Gillingham, I'd done all my badges. I've got I've done my um, my A license. Um, well, I've done my B license actually at, at Gillingham. When I came out of Gillingham, I went and did my A license. Um, but the B license, I'd always been involved in coaching. I'd always coached local local teams. I'd, I'd set up my own soccer schools in the summers and that round of the area. So yeah, I'd always had an interest in that. Um, so it. it and I applied for the job actually at Gillingham um, back in '92 when um, right. Glenn Roder Glenn Roder got the job. <clears throat> I went for player player manager, and I, I got through to the final interview with me and Glenn Roder. And um, Glenn Roder got the job. Um, I was on a week to week contract, and um, it was only one way I was going from there. Is um, is out the door, obviously. When uh, Okay. The manager gets a job, and uh, there's someone at the club who's after his job. <laughs> so, yeah. so I went, uh, and again, like you just said, I I could have gone to Wrexham. I could have gone. Brian Flynn rang me at Wrexham to go and play league football with them. Could have gone up to Harryford and signed for them. Could have gone to a couple of northern clubs, uh, but it would have meant moving, moving all the family. And yeah. sitting bone came in <clears throat> two minutes down the road. Um, it was an up and up and coming uh, non league club, um, and good good deal they offered me, so I signed down there, and I, I really enjoyed my time. So would you say it was just a sort of coincidence that you ended up settling in in Kent overall? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think uh, it happened. It happened when I was at um, Millwall. I moved down here when I was at Millwall. Okay. Um, we I lived in a in a, a flat in Beckenham, Cobus Cope Road, where the Crystal Palace training ground is now, and we lived there. And um, I had my two boys at the time, um, Jonathan and Mark, and we um, we couldn't afford to buy houses up there; they were so expensive. So I remember Dean Dean White, who used to play for Millwall and and Gillingham, he made a, he he had a, he said, "Why don't you move down to the Medway Towns? Come down one." day and have a look so we we drove down one sunday me and my wife and and the kids and we went down and had a look and we thought well yeah what we can uh, sell our flat for we could buy a nice house down here so yeah that's what we did uh, so we moved down and it, then uh, about three three more players from Millwall moved down with me so we all then moved down to these areas like paul inchwood and david fry um and, and moved uh, down here so with Dean White there was four of us down travelling up every day to training so it was great so that, that's when we stayed in the area that's, this is where I got and then to get them as I say the move to Gillingham uh, was brilliant because yeah. it was just on the doorstep so it was ideal for us and we've stayed here ever since we haven't moved yeah in terms of coaching how big do you think the pool would have to be for you to move because I was thinking um, when you left Gillingham that your profile uh, sort of when you left Gillingham mm. as a manager recently, your profile would be a lot higher. So I was thinking, mm. oh, where, where, where's Steve Lovell going to go next? And I thought mm. maybe when, um, obviously when Justin Edinburgh passed away, I thought, oh, he might go to Leighton or mm. something like that. But how big do you think the pool would have to be to make you move again? Or would you not consider that? Um, do you know, that's a good question. Because I've had this, this conversation with my wife and my family a lot. Yeah. 
And like I've said to, to before, you know, when you're, you're, you're younger, you've got your family around you and everything. You, it's, it's very hard when the kids are growing up. Now they've all grown up. Yeah. Um, but even so, you know, it, uh, it'd have to take something special for me to move away and be away. But I, I don't think I could move away for the whole week. Okay. Um, it would mean that perhaps I could go away and stay a, a, a night uh, one, 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 you know, I've, we've talked about it. Perhaps you stay over for a Tuesday night or something and a Thursday night, but the rest of the time you're home. So it, it, it'll have to fall into what, you know, my, my, um, my general life rather than the football life, I think. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's why, you know, that this, this absolutely, um, thing at the moment is fantastic for me. Yeah. Um, as, apart from the, the job being a great job and enjoying it, um, it's, it's, it's on my doorstep. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of when you first went into coaching, you said um, said to me earlier that you you were obviously doing um, some youth coaching and you were doing mm. some coaching at the likes of Sittingbourne Hastings, um, the Gravesend and Northley it was at the time. Yeah. But how was it? Yeah. How was it doing the rounds like that? And did you have did you have an ultimate goal of where you wanted to get to? Um, I loved it. I, I loved the non league. I loved the non league football. Um, I loved the people that were involved in football clubs. Um, they, they, they worked so hard. Um, yeah. and, you know, they, they've got, you know, they're, they're, and it's a, although they say that non-league management is a, is a part-time job, it's not, it's a full-time job as a manager because you're, you're doing everything. Yeah. You're, you know, you're dealing with 24-7, you're dealing with players, um, which was, was great. I, I, I loved it and I loved the training and coaching. Um, and I spent quite a lot of time managing and uh, my player managing first of all in the, in the in a non league game and then going on to manage. Yeah. Um, but and, and I just loved um, I just loved being with the players um, and coaching them and and looking forward to the Saturdays to see exactly how they have responded to the training during the week. And I think that's why I, when I got the opportunity at Gilling, and that's why I love more than anything is. Is you know working with the boys on a daily basis, and then when the Saturday come, um, seeing how they had um, improved through the week uh, to show us what they can do, and if they hadn't, then working on it the next week to make sure that they they, they got it right. Yeah. So it, it, it was a coaching is a it's an individual thing, but it's something that you get satisfaction out of seeing the end result rather than when you're doing it. Okay, fair enough. So you went to. You went to Gillingham, um, obviously ended up at Gillingham a few times. Um, yeah. You appeared in a senior coaching role when Peter Taylor left in 2014 as a member of the Gang of Four, um, yeah. as it became known with obviously Andy Hesson Tyler, Darren Hare, Mark yeah. Patterson. How did that all come about Is um, in terms of like how how was the four formed? Because um, I think it's quite, it's quite unique to have four people in a similar role, so to speak. And did you all have sort of separate roles you were allocated to or was it all even? Well, it, it was a funny, it's, it's a funny situation, it really was, because initially I was there doing the under-18s, Mark Patterson was under-23s, I think Darren was head of the academy, and Hesse was first team coach, I think, I believe, under Peter Taylor. Yes, it's so true, that's yeah. how the four of us were. So when it when Peter left, the first people who actually um, the chairman went to were the three lads who had been at the club a long time which were Hesse, Darren and Pato, Mark Patterson, okay. so the three of them. So I was still with the youth team. So I remember we were playing Port Vale on the Saturday and the chairman had, had said to them three, look, I want you to do it, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, Mark Patterson got ill on the, the Tuesday or Wednesday, so he couldn't go on the Saturday. So Andy um, and Darren called me across. And I remember on training and said, look, we're going to Port Vale. We want you to come with us with the first team. Right. So I, and I remember then going across and doing it. And then when we went and did the training session for the first day, Hesse went to me. He said, "Loves, you, you're going to lead it. I want you to lead it. You go in and, and lead the group." Okay. So, so I've gone straight from the under 18 straight to the first team in this first training group, faced with all these players. And I yeah. thought, right, this is it. This is my opportunity. Yeah. And I just jumped in there, and I've and I've just I just taken to it straight away. I've just said to the boys, they all knew me obviously from being at the club and that before, but just as just as a face. Yeah. So to go in there and and do and put on my 
my own personality and what I wanted to do in front of that group of, of players was brilliant. And they all responded to it. And I said, look, this is what we got to do. If anybody don't want to do it, come and see me after and they can, they can go, basically. Yeah. So, and they all responded to it. And I led, uh, we went to Port Vale on the Saturday and I led, I led everything. I led the, 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 the talk and with that Hesse helping and, and that. But I was the one that was, uh, the, the, the forefront of everything. So it was quite, uh, and we lost 2-1. I remember, um, we were one all and, um, um, what's his name? Joe Martin made a mistake, left back, and uh, they went through and scored in the last minute. And we lost two one. Right. But you know, after that, then we picked up and we we took over the training session and and did a a, a really good job. So in in a way, in a way, it was fate that it happened really with like you say Mark Patterson getting injured. Yeah, it did. Uh, it did. Yeah. With ill, yeah, Mark getting ill, and then Mark didn't really after that when he came back. It was more. Um, the three of us, you know, because Pato didn't do, um, he didn't, he wasn't involved in the on on field training. He was more involved in uh, the off field um, working out, uh, the coaching and um, the the scouting side of it first. Okay. Um, so it, so it was more me, Darren, and um, um, Hesse. Okay, and you you helped recruit Justin Edinburgh, didn't you? Yes, we did. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was um, it was quite a, a <laughs> it's quite a strange sort of um, a time really because we would every week we were interviewing managers, but every week we were picking up points and doing really well. Yeah. Um, so the chairman was in no rush to, <laughs> to yeah. make a an appointment, um, but it got to a stage where he felt you know he had to do something. Um, so obviously we we had to make a decision on on um, who we wanted to come in, and um, we we all agreed that uh, Justin should come in. And you obviously did yourself did yourself proud because you stayed on in a coaching role with the first team when Justin came in, didn't you? Yeah, this was something I I was um, when we were when we were going to an appoint when we were going to appoint uh, a new manager. I I I mentioned to the chairman. I said, look. Wherever a new manager comes in, he said, I, I am not going back to youth team. Okay. I said, I am not going back to youth team. I said, I want to stay with the, around the first team. Yeah. I want to, I want to be a part of this. Uh, this is something I want. And, uh, and to be fair to, to, um, the chairman, he said, right, lads, he said, whatever happens, you will be a part of the, the first team, um, outfit. So, and to be fair to him, he did. You know, I, I it, what happened, um, uh, Justin came and me and Andy stayed on and worked uh, with uh, with him under under Justin with the first team and it was brilliant. Yeah, brilliant time, that's brilliant a, time. That's ideal, really. Um, I remember you saying at a Gillingham fans forum that um, he eventually Edinburgh um, was the key behind you leaving um, eventually. Why mm. why did that happen? Was that sort of a pit matter of him bringing in his own men? Yeah, yeah. He, um, I remember him. Um, Coming to me at the end of, of the season, um, and saying that you know that the next season. I remember it was at the player of the year do, and he saying to me like that next year you could be doing this, and I want you to be doing this and doing that, which was brilliant. I loved it. Yeah. Um, and what happened was uh, Andy, because uh, me Hesse and Justin were going to stay on and do it, but Hesse then got um, a chance to go to Orient, I think, as as manager. Yeah. So Andy left, um, and so um, uh, Justin brought in um, uh, Kerslake, Dave Kerslake, yeah. to come in um, and work uh, 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 as his assistant. Because I would, I said to Justin, I would love to be his assistant when as he went. Okay. Um, and um, but obviously he um, he respected my. Uh, he, he said, I expected you to say that. He said, but I'm bringing in Dave Kersley. So I said, fine, that's okay. He said, but I want you to stay on and I want you to to work with us. I said, fine, lovely, no problem. So the three of us had a good season together, the three of us. We really got on well and everything was fine. Uh, and we had a really good start to the season. Uh, we're top of the league for quite a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and it was, I think we, we went to Wigan or something and um, Nels threw one in, went through his hands 
And I think from there we went down there a little bit. We were, we were 2 0 up at times and lost the games. Walsall, I think, and uh, Wigan, and there's a couple of others. And then we ended up finished like halfway, I think, ninth or tenth or something like that. Yeah. So, um, and then at the end of that season, um, Justin called me in his office and he said, "Look, I'm, um, I'm going to bring in my own man." And okay. I went, "Okay, fine." And I shook his hand and wished him all the best. And um, we we went. So I, again, it was no animosity. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any resentment or. You know, we got on well at the time that we were there, so, um, you know, that was it. I, I went. I left. Yeah, no, that's so, just football, isn't it? Um, yeah. What happened in terms of, um, like you say, the season we were top for a while? I think it was the Wigan game, the one that was on TV and we were 2 0 up. Yeah. That sort of maybe yeah. triggered a bit of a decline. But well, how serious were championship ambitions when we were top at Christmas and all that sort of thing? Oh, blimey. We were, um, we, we really uh, thought we were going to have a really good chance really good chance you know because we were beating teams and um, and the, the team that we had really was an excellent team with John Egan in it and Bradley Dack and people like that you know it was, it was a pretty good side Yeah. so you know and it just proves now where these players have gone and you know how good that these players were yeah. uh, and, and they, they really were fit and they worked hard and and um, you know it was it was just that we thought that we had a really good opportunity individual errors like cost us most probably when i was manager during them our our defeats the individual errors then cost you cost you points that ultimately stop you from doing what you want to do yeah yeah so and that that was the case you know it, 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 there's no there's no why or where for why it happens it, it just it just happens yeah and that's that's just the way football is and you know, you look at South End last year; they're going up by a goal scored in the last second of the minute of a, of um, of their, their game that keeps them up. Yeah, you know, absolutely. that's you can't legislate for that. You just don't know what's what's on the corner in football. Yeah. So, and that was a reason. You know, we we went on a bit of a bad run then, and then that's what where we lost it. I think. Yeah. No, it was a shame, but it's still a great season. I remember it vividly. And just... yeah, it was an excellent season. After the end of that. Um... You went to Bromley, um, yeah. Working with Neil Smith, obviously a former teammate yeah. of yours. My my yeah. football editor now, Mac at Kent Sports News, is a Bromley fan, so I'm sure he'd appreciate a word on how that experience yeah. was for you. It was excellent. It was funny on the on the Saturday. I think it was a Saturday. Um, it might have been the Friday. I think that Justin had got rid of me on the Saturday, the day after eight o'clock in the morning. I get a phone call from Smudger. Loves. I just heard that you left. You then come and meet me. So. Straight away, all right. So I go and I go and meet him, have a cup of coffee with him, and it was done. You know, it, it was brilliant. You know, I, I love Smudge of the Bits. We yeah. get on really, really well together. We play together at Gillingham. We've always been in in contact with each other. He's a great lad, um, and he's done a brilliant job at Bromley. And um, when I was there, I loved my time there. I loved the club. I thought the club was fantastic. I thought the people behind the scenes were brilliant. Um, Smudger is a great lad, and we we had a good team, and I really enjoyed and enjoyed my time there. Really enjoyed my time, and and to be fair, if it was anything any other team bar Gillingham, I would never have left there. Yeah. Never have left there. Yeah, I would still be. I'd be still there now. I thought they they had a real shot at league football this season. Obviously, that seems to have tailed off, but um, yeah, they were doing really great at the start of the season. Yeah, they were, and I, I speak to Smudger a lot, and I've been to have a coffee with him, and 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 everything, and. Um, as I say, you know he's a brilliant. He wears his heart on his sleeve. He works. He works hard, and and he's got the club at heart. And and you know he's dis- he's so disappointed what was what's happened the last um, three or four uh, well last couple of months really. They've yeah. had a bit of a bad run. And um, but uh, like I said to him, I said whatever uh, happens, you know this year he's done a remarkable job, yeah, brilliant job there. Absolutely. And and uh, they'll only you know they'll go forward again. They'll, they'll bounce back again. And it's funny if we go back, <laughs> if when we go back our season this year, our, our first game will be against Bromley. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. yeah. At, at Ebbsfleet, so that'd be a that'd be a nice juicy one. Yeah. To start with a bit of a reunion. Um. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um. Maybe a potential future junior manager. I don't know if that's what he'd be interested in. Something like that. I don't know, but he's obviously doing well for himself. Yeah, he is. He's doing great for himself, and um, people are, are judged on on results and results alone. Uh, as a manager and, and it's a shame because you know the people don't understand some of the the things that you've got to deal with behind the scenes 
um, as well. But at the end, ultimately, it's a business, and people have got to make decisions on on you know where the club are and where the club are expected to go, and if they are going to get there. So you know, and and Smudger and he knows that, and we all know that. We all knew that at, at, when I was manager, Gillingham, I knew that if the results weren't great, you'd be gone. Yeah. So I think you know he, he's he's in a he knows where he is at the moment. He's done brilliant at Bromley, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, and you know, and they, they'll they'll finish the season strong, and he'll be fine, and he'll push on again next year. And who knows? You know, yes, he has got the the makings of being a very very good manager, and uh, which he is now. Yeah. Uh, and he and he'll want to to forward his career, and uh, I won't be surprised if uh, you know he gets uh, offers from other other clubs anyway. Yeah, like I said, I'm sure he'll go again next year, and obviously, oh, he will do. Wish him the best apart, apart from the game against Eversley. <laughs> um, yeah, well, whatever happens, happens. You know, in that game, it's. Uh, but you know, I, I you know, he, I just uh, I think he's he's done a great job, and uh, they're a good club, uh, and I know the owner very well there. Um, and um, I know that uh, he'll, he'll be fully supportive of uh, Smudger anyway. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you said obviously you left Bromley to go back to Gillingham as a that was yeah. as, a, as a coach with AD Pennock. Um, yes. H- how did that opportunity come about to go back? Um, well, AD um, AD rang me um, and said, "Look, I'm 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 going to go uh, uh, get manager of." Um, uh, been offered the manager's job. He said, "There's there's two uh, coaches I'd like to come with me, and uh, Jamie Day is one." And he said, uh, "I'd like you to be the other one. Do you fancy it?" And I, I went to meet Aidy in his house and spoke to him, and um, and I said, uh, he, he put it to me. I said, "Yeah, I'd, I'd like to." I said, so I'd, "I've got to speak to with Smudger first. Yeah, um, but I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to come back and um, and manage uh, or help help with the matter you manage that." So. I uh, went back to Smudger um, and explained it all to him, and he was fine, and the club were fine, and and released me from my uh, my contract there, and um, with no you know no um, questions asked or anything, and they yeah. knew that you know, I'd, and like I said to them, you know, I wouldn't go anywhere else other than Gillingham, you know. Okay. So they were brilliant, they were brilliant. So I ended up obviously being with Ad and um, and uh, and Jamie, and with. AD, obviously, his, his reign was sort of stagnated because he was at the end of one season and then the start of the other season. Um, yeah. And how was it? Because I think it's fair to say the result, results weren't always great and I think AD himself no. made it pretty clear that um, the squad was... The squad needed to change in, the sort of people involved with the squad. Um, yeah. How how was it all in the dressing room? It was quite difficult at the time. Uh, when we first took over, I think there was a lot of big um, egos in the dressing room. Right. Um, and people that weren't performing on the field, and Aidy was brilliant. He uh, he went there and, and sorted them out. Um, he sorted them out by by getting rid of them, yeah. uh, getting them out of the dressing room. Uh, and it's not easy to do when you go into a new group of uh, players. But when you go in and there's there's certain players that you know shouldn't be in there, people are going to have a bad effect in the dressing room or on the field or training ground or in the in the dressing room then there's no wrong, no need for them to be around. And so A D addressed that and got rid of certain players and um the you know the place was a better place for us. Yeah. And it was uh, it's quite uh, pleasant to work in. Yeah, I think that is important because um obviously the fans sort of mainly see what's on the pitch. Well I th- I think, you know, when um I added uh, with certain players, when I was manager at Gillingham, the, the, the supporters can see people who who put in the effort, oh, yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. and, and 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 really work hard. And and, and if they're not, it, it's 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 so obvious to people to, to notice. So if I'm noticing it, there's there's thousands of people in the stadium that notice it as well. Yeah. So you've only got to be fair. You've got to be fair, and um, it's 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 not the rocket science when when you make them decisions because they've done it for themselves. They yeah. made it themselves. Yeah. So yeah, they were they were made, and that was the reason why. Uh, you know, it's no good having talent without having the work ethic. And um, and unfortunately, when when you're in the lower leagues, you've got to have that work ethic, uh, work ethic more than um, the talent. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, obviously, eventually, AD's reign came to an end. Why was it that mm. you stayed on when both Pennock and Jamie Day left? Um, well, I was asked to. Um, okay. Um, Peter, AD on the on the day that we were uh, we were asked to go and see the chairman, um, 
we went uh, right there. Um, Ad and um, Jamie went up first, and and they were told that they were um, they were being released uh, by the football club. Okay. Um, and then I went up last, and I expected the same thing. Um, sat there with Peter Taylor and the chairman, and um, I was asked to stay on and work with Peter. Okay. Uh, which surprised me. It really did surprise me. Um, but I was obviously happy with it. Um, but it was a surprise. I never, I never really. I thought I was going as well, um, and. So I stayed with Peter and worked with him um, for, the, I think, a couple of weeks, two or three weeks that he was there, a couple of games, two or three games. I'm not sure how long it was. Um, and then got the, the phone call saying that um, that he had left and I was in charge. So yeah. it all happened very, very, very quickly. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was going to say, um, he wasn't he wasn't there for long after he came down from being director of football, which probably was, a, I don't know how much of a surprise it was to people inside, but to outside it came as a bit of a shock. But um, mm. obviously you were presented with the opportunity for the for the first time to lead the team on your own, really, um, sort yes. of being the main man. And how did it feel yeah. to sort of finally get that role? Well, it was funny. I, I, I've said this story a number of times. I was, I was coming down the road with my wife in the car, coming home, and... Um, and we were talking about it, and Peter Peter Taylor just you know he's he's in the job, and I'm saying oh I, I I'm going to leave it. I will wait till the summer and see what happens, and because I can't see me getting a job now, and and uh, you know I I need to move on and have a look at what my options are. And we we come in the drive, and I, I, as I go out the car, the phone rang, and it was the chairman, and um, I went oh, hello chairman. He went loves. He said I got some good news and some bad news. I mean, oh, right, what's, <laughs> what's the bad news? He said, the bad news is that uh, uh, Peter Taylor's decided to leave. Right. And I went, oh, okay, oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's terrible. And he went, the good news is I want you to take the team on Saturday. So it was absolutely amazing because about 30 seconds earlier, me and my wife have been talking about what I'm going to do and at the end of the season, and all of a sudden you've been given the chance to leave the team that you always wanted to leave. Yeah. Yeah. And it was absolutely amazing. I couldn't believe it. So he, I said, well, who? he said, look, it's up to you. He said, you do what you have to do. He said, but you get a team out there against Peter Brown on Saturday. Yeah. Um, so this was on the Tuesday or the Wednesday. So we got everybody in and, and went through certain things that we were going to do on the, on the Thursday and the Friday and went to Peter Brown and beat them 1-0. And it was, uh, as, as I'm saying, it was the best time. That was the best moment for me. That was at that because to be given the chance to lead the team and to get a result, and then um, and then the rest of you know is what everybody knows is history, really. But yeah, I remember I remember being I was actually in a gym and I checked my phone notification through that it happened on like you say on the Tuesday or Wednesday, and then I went went up to Peterborough on the Saturday with a friend of mine and saw yeah. the t- saw the team set out. I thought, oh. Who's playing right back? Obviously, Sean Clare went in at right yeah. back, um, ma- making a stamp on the team. And I was going to say, how did it feel when sort of Lee Martin curled that ball into the corner um, and the full time whistle? Yeah, the full time whistle was was the, the one, and, and even in the first half, I think Elliot List had two or three good opportunities. Yeah. To um, to put the game like to bed, really, and, and um, we missed him. I thought, oh god! <laughs> but then Lee scored the goal, and then we like second half, we. Um, I think it was, um, yes, I think we scored in first half, didn't we? We scored in the first yeah, half. Yeah, I think it was the first yeah, half. Yeah, we went one and then we held on to it second half. Yeah, but, but, you know, it was fantastic. When the whistle went, it was brilliant, you know. To, and the chairman came on the pitch and he was so happy and everything. And like I said, you know, walking towards that dressing room was the best, best time in football, really. Thinking, you know, God, bloody hell, you know, after all what we've gone through, yeah. all the years of waiting for this opportunity, yeah. this has happened and it's right, it does feel good. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, how f- I know you've spoken openly in the press before saying that you just sort of took it one game at a time, you're going to do the job until you're asked otherwise, but how yeah. how hard did you have to fight to get the job on a permanent basis? Uh, but didn't have to fight at, at all, he just, I just did, did the job, I just kept doing what we, we were asked to do. And whatever the decision the chairman made, when it when it was, or if it was going to happen, you know that was down to him. Like I said, it's a very very big decision for chairman to make on on picking managers because it's it's a it's a massive massive decision. Yeah. Um, so you know he he waited his time and until the time was right, and 
Um, I was just glad that uh, you know he did. Um, oh, I, we, we we perhaps deserved it, but you know that's that was only I was only asked to do a job on an interim basis, and uh, if he had got decided to get another manager in, I do after that period, then I wouldn't have been happy. But that would have been his decision. So yeah, as long as you don't just uh, proud, and I'm, I'm, I think it's pretty clear that you did, obviously getting the job on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like I said, I, I, I loved my time uh, doing it, and I was disappointed when it ended. Uh, I would let, st- love still to be there now doing it, and is you know that's no, uh, I'm not keeping that a secret. That's something I, I you know, I, I, I'm really disappointed about. Yeah. Uh, but you move on, and um, you know, every every day now is a, uh, a different challenge with uh, with another club you go to, and um, you know that's football. Uh, I've had a lot of clubs, a lot of things that have. I've gone on at football clubs and uh, every every one you enjoy and uh, embrace. There were some cracking away results, obviously, Peterborough in the first game, the likes of Rotherham, I remember that one especially because it's been yeah. a long journey. I've got a very close friend that's a Rotherham fan and they were in. They were having really good home form and he was confident. And obviously yeah. I, I remember, remember Tom Eves and Josh Parker getting the goal, Scunthorpe, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not easy to win away in League One, but what do you think was the key to the success of the team away from home? I think is um, is as approaching it the same way as you as you would do at home. I think uh, teams uh, when you play in a way, a team they set up themselves at home to attack, yeah. and I feel that it, it leaves gaps um, for that to exploit on the counter attack. And when I played the diamond away from home, I think that that sort of um, that was uh, in, in evidence really that we you know we when we went to Charlton and won, you know that. Uh, on the counter attack, I remember uh, Josh Parker and Tom Eve scoring there on, um, you know, at, at the valley, and oh. where we we got them down the sides um, when their full backs are pushed on, and we worked on that during the week, and the same thing at Rotherham, and the same thing at Peterborough. These are the things that we, because we had pace in the side, and we we could uh, exploit um, the, the gaps when they pushed forward. So I think uh, that that itself, um, you know, caused problems for the home teams when we attacked them. Um, and I just I just enjoyed um, playing football, um, getting the ball down and passing it rather than just booting it. Uh, and perhaps sometimes uh, we played too much, and that's what maybe we lost the games at home. Perhaps. Yeah. But it was something that you know that's the way I wanted to do. Perhaps the players weren't as good as I thought they were to play the way that we wanted to do, but. Okay. That's the way I want. That's the way I wanted to play. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, absolutely. Um, and I, you know, perhaps um, there's, there's been uh, things said this year about Gillingham this year being direct, and but they get results. If they're direct and they, they get results, then you know there's no good uh, changing it, is there? Yeah, no. I think, like you say, you wanted to play, and maybe, like you say, you didn't have the quality of players. But I think talking about now, MK Dons under um, Russell Martin, they. They try and play out the back and like yeah. play football, and so often they've come unstuck. But maybe they don't have the players. But eventually, um, if it does work, and Rochdale as well, like something something nice is going to yeah. come from it. So yeah, it's yeah. always fair to stick to your philosophy. I think. Um, I think so. Otherwise, there's no point doing it. You know, I, I, it's, it's no point me play, wanting to. I've been brought up and I went to a good academy at Charlton, who t- taught the way to play a diamond, play four three three. Uh, play with the ball, play out the back, play with your full back, wide full backs, and yeah. your, your movement in midfield and your front two working together with your number ten. Why, you know, why, why go through years and years of 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 of, of that in coaching and to get a chance in football and go right? I'm going to get your ball. I'm going to boot it up the centre forward and get the knockdowns. Yeah. You know, that's that's not that's not what I want to do. So. Yeah. You know, and we were we we got success to it, and I don't care what anybody says, we got success to it with the group of players we had. Yeah, we finished like sixteenth or whatever it was the first year, twelfth or thirteenth the second year. We that for us to have that in that what we had at Gilling, we were successful. Yeah, we were successful. Yeah, no, um, I and I believe, and, and in myself, we were successful. I believe that. Yeah. So, and that's why it's disappointed this year not to be able to take it another step for, further with. Uh, my own players, which I would have brought in. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, maybe I think it's probably fair to say that the home form wasn't necessarily great. Um, can you put your finger on why that was? Um, I think sometimes you know it, it's it's a mental uh, approach. Like if you you lose one, perhaps one or two early on in the season at home, it has an effect on um, people's the players' mentality, thinking, "Oh, it's." 
because I've been in that position myself when we were at Palace, we, when we went down um, to the championship from um, um, League One, as it was in the Premier League. We were playing and we were getting beat every week and then you, it, it becomes second nature, really. You're going out in the field thinking, oh, we're going to get beat today, we're going to get... And it's hard, it's hard to get out of. It's hard to get out of. So yeah. I think that had a, you know, a big uh, influence on it. And, you know, if, if we started the game well, which we did do a lot of teams, a lot of times at home we started the game really well, but then an, an individual error would, would put the, the other team 1-0 up and then a goal changes the game, obviously. Yeah. And then the opposition will come on top, whereas we'd been on top for the first part of the game. So, you know, goals change games. And it's right what people say, goals change games. So when we're on top in the early part of the game at home, you score, you win the game. Yeah. And we did do. We did do on a number of occasions yeah. at home. Yeah, I remember a lot of people talking about getting that early goal. But I think, like like you say, even like this season under Steve Evans, the home form's been good, but... We got the win away at Accrington and then it took us forever mm-hmm. to get the second away win. A, a lot of draws, yeah. but it may be, like you say, it's the mental mental block of maybe not having the results that necessarily you want yeah. originally. But it, I, I think as well, it, like performances sometimes, like we lost games at home that we should never have lost. We should have won because we, we were the better side. Yeah. But the other team would get, would get a, a goal from somewhere or they score in the last minute or it'll be... And uh, someone would make a mistake, or Gabby would fall over, or or Thomas Holy would let one in, or whether he should have saved. It was all these kind of things that that sort of um, accumulated really in, in us not winning the games that we should do at home. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, I remember obviously you had a big impact when you came in, and I think um, that the aim. Well, there was a bit of a r- real feeling that we were going to sort of push up there and maybe even push for the playoffs, wasn't there? Yes, yeah, there was. <laughs> we had a really good run. And uh, I, I remember going to Bradford um, uh, away, and I'm thinking, right, this game, like, if we can get a result here, I think we can really push on and finish the season strongly with the games that we had coming up, and, and really have a good. And I think me and the chairman really we, we talked about it and thought this could be. And we went, we went there, lost one 0 and I remember it where we had most of the game, and we just couldn't score. Tom Eves missed a couple at the end, and. And it was um, it was just so disappointing. And I remember having a, a, a big bust up in the dressing room with a couple of players after the end of the game right. um, because of it. Um, but it wasn't because of the performance; it's because of, they were so frustrated about the situation. Because yeah. I think they felt it as well. Yeah. They felt it as well. So you had to keep them calm. You had to say, "Look, we still got games to go. We understand how you're feeling and frustration. We all are." But it was just a matter of keeping calm and finishing the season off. Which we did do. Yeah, I think obviously we stayed out comfortably that year, um, getting the goal at Bristol Rovers away. I think it was to confirm yeah. it was great. And my, yeah. my dad always goes on about the final game against Plymouth when obviously there was nothing rising right anymore, and it was the five-two game, I think. And how, yeah, how yeah, great that was. But um, yeah, the following year obviously start start started quite well, um, reasonably well, and then um, obviously we sort of drifted along. I just wanted to ask you to summarise the situation with. Um, sending some players home that was widely reported in the, play- in the mm. press. Um, can you just yeah. summarise that situation for us? Yeah. Well, you said like we started the season very well, which we did do. I remember we, we, we won at uh, Accrington. I think we beat Burton at home. Yeah. Um, I think it was Burton at home. Yeah, and it? then um, um, we, we picked up a couple of injuries of key players. I remember Regan, Regan Cook getting injured to be coming out of the side and there's a couple of others. And then we lost a, a few players through injury and then we had a bit of a, a, a bad spell. But during the good spell, all these players um, were, were performing to their strengths and were, were doing what we were asking them to do. I remember going down to Plymouth, uh, coming to the end of the season, it was around about, I don't know what it was, December, January time, I think, and going there on a Tuesday night, losing 3-1, and some of the performances from some of the players were ridiculous. There was no effort at all. Okay. Um, and going like I said about the start of the season, where these perfor- these players were performing to the highest level, and that's why we were getting results. They weren't performing at all. They weren't putting the effort in. So I had to do something about it. Um, and I, I thought, right, I'm going to just make a just send them home. Yeah. So I just sent them home and told them to go home and, and think about their their own game. Think about what I'm saying to them. Uh, and if they want to come back and give in the effort that they did at the beginning of the season, they come back. If not, then they can stay away. Because uh, I didn't want people like that around around the dressing room. 
Yeah, I think the feeling um, is you don't always necessarily demand performances, but you at least demand the effort, right? The effort, yeah. Because, you know, we all, we all have bad games with the ball. We all make mistakes. But if you're running around and, and doing the things defensively that people are asking you to do, you're, you're helping the team. Yeah. Um, but if you're not and you're not prepared to do it, then there's no point you being out there. Yeah. So you might as well stay away. Um, and to be fair, they, they came back and... Um, um, there were three players really, and and um, one of them refused to. I'm not naming names, but one of them refused to go away because he felt that it was wrong what I was saying to him. Yeah. And perhaps, perhaps looking back, um, he was right, and I agreed with him. I agree with him, but what I did do was get a reaction from him because I'd actually said it to him. So I got that reaction from him straight away. Yeah. Um, and I was happy with that. Um. So, but the other two, they they went away and they didn't come back um, until they were re- they were ready. I think I've said to you before. Um, Josh Parker spoke openly about it, and he said that it had a positive impact on him. So it was obviously yes. back yourself to make the decisions. Um, yeah. Well, Josh is a good lad. I've, I've known Josh a, like a long time, and Josh has been a, a great player. He was brilliant for us the season before last, and and some of the goals he scored at Northampton and, and like Charlton, and he's an excellent player. Uh, but when he's not doing what he should be doing, or uh, he's no good to anybody, and that's what I told him basically. So it was up to him to go and get himself sorted out, and he did do. Uh, fair play to him. He came back in the office and, and apologised and said, "Look, I'm ready to go." Yeah. And so I had the, the positive effect out of him, and uh, it's only for him. But praise to understand, Lewis, is that you're doing it for them. You know, you're, you're yeah. doing it for the club. Ultimately, you're doing it for them because. It's them that are playing, they are performing, and they've got to perform every every year and every game uh, properly. Yeah. Coming to the end of the season, and obviously you didn't see out the last couple of games, but we came 13th, which was, which was again, <clears throat> progress on, on the previous year. Obviously, we yeah. we stayed up under AD at Northampton on the final day, which was obviously very nerve-wracking, but we got there, mm-hmm. then I think it was 17th and then 13th, which was progress. Um, how how gutted were you when you left, and how how did it come around mm. as much as you can say? Um, yeah, it was. I was disappointed, obviously, but um, I think the chairman uh, made his mind up. He wanted to make a um, a change, um, so we had a, 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 a chat um, like two about two games before the end of the season, really. Which you know the, the timing was strange, yeah. um, but um, you know it's it's down to him when he wants to talk to me and. And I think he expected, you know, I think he thought I would finish the season out um, and do the two remaining games. Um, but I didn't fa- find that was fair yeah. uh, on the players that were there. That uh, If it was going to happen, it might as well happen now. I was disappointed because I had prepared the team for Saturday against Charlton and um, we, had, we had done all the all the preparation and... So, I, you know, I, and it was a big game for us. I would love to have been, you know, there on the Saturday against Charlton. But um, I felt it wasn't right to do. Um, and for the players, it wasn't right because, you know, I'd be standing there and let them perhaps know that I'm not staying and it, it's not right. So um, I decided um, to, well, we made we made a decision between us, me and the chairman, that we would finish there. And, um, um, and that was it, basically. And, you know, as I said, there's no... Animosity, uh, um, you know, he's made his decision which he thought was right for the football club, and and uh, you know you respect that. So I, um, I just, um, you know, you just carry on. Uh, disappointed, obviously, not to get the to get the final season, where I think we would have improved again on on last year, yeah. uh, bringing in my own players again uh, for in the summer, which then would have given me my full squad of my own players. But for the first time, which uh, you know would have been great. Yeah. But but you know that's that's uh, the way it, uh, it went, and uh, you know let's let's uh, uh, see how they go this year. They're doing all right so far, so it's hopefully they can fin- finish the season off strongly. Yeah. How was it in terms of as the season was coming to end and to an end, and there were rumours that um, people being mm. sitting in the stands. Obviously, Steve Evans is there now, and he was mm. he was there. He said he mm. was doing some scouting jobs, but. Um, I spoke mm. to Mark Paston in the past, and he said you're all aware of it. But how much of it did it, mm. did it factor in what you were doing? Uh, no, a lot because like there's there's managers uh, every every game that go to, to games and watch games, and they and when they're out of a job, they will do scouting work for um, uh, for clubs. 
So, but the, the one thing that we always knew that the chairman and uh, Steve Evans were, were close. They were, uh, they'd always spoken um, about uh, football, and they were close together. And and I think even um, before when I we we got the job, before we got the job, um, there was talk of perhaps Steve Evans being involved in in that. So obviously you you take notes notice of that, but to a degree where you just thought, well, that, that's football. You just get on with it. Just go on with our job was to keep the club up and and try and finish as high in the league and that's what we did. So yeah. we although it was you know, although we knew he was coming to games, I remember seeing him at Wickham and other other games as well, but you know, he's there doing a job for, uh, you know, that he has to do. So yeah. you know, people can make assumptions of uh, what they want, but um you know, it could have been anybody in that in that um, in that crowd, any manager. Um, and then if he had got the job, then they say, "Oh, he was coming to the games." So <clears throat> you know, you just you just get on with it, just get on with it, and and get on with your job, and uh, that, that's what we we did. Yeah, no no hard feelings with the club though. In terms of like, you're still going to games. Obviously, it's got a place in your heart. No, 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 where you no, live. No, no hard still feelings. Working there, that's good. Yeah, yeah. You know, my son still works there, and um, you know, I, I've been to games, and I speak still speak to the chairman, I still speak to Steve Evans. Um, so you know, I you know, I I don't got a problem with any. I mean, it's it's football. Um, it's the way that the game is, and um, you know, it's 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 my my club that I've spent nearly twenty years at. So I'm not going to fall out with someone just over over something um, that I can get on with or I can deal with. Yeah, and just a couple more questions about Gillingham. Um, how how do you think they're getting on now then under Steve Evans? Well, as I say, they 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 play a different style of football. I think um, they get results from it. They're not conceding a lot of goals. Uh, they're not scoring a lot of goals, but they they can get games one nil. Yeah. Which is um, if you can do that throughout throughout the season, you're you're going to be successful, aren't you? Um, the big thing, the difference between perhaps Steve's team now and our team is that they're not making individual errors at the back who are costing goals. Yeah. Um, and they're defending very. When you look at it, like Max, uh, Barry, and Connor were three of my back four last year. Yeah. So you know, it's, 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 it's you know, the, I'm not pinning anything, everything on Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, that's that's the that's the way it is. You know, individual errors, and Gabby was brilliant for us. You know, him and Thomas Oli, excellent. You know, yeah. Thomas has gone to Ipswich, so he's a decent goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, so it was just uh, you know things you know errors that happen and um, and that's what that's what the difference between the two teams. But yeah, they're doing they're doing well and um, you know as I say we don't know if the season's going to finish, but let's hope it does and uh, they get a true reflection of where they finish. Yeah, either either, either Zakuani or um, Jack Tucker's the second coming of John Terry, something like that. Because he's he's yeah. also, he's also yeah. flying, flying through. Um, could you ever see yourself going back to Gillingham? Obviously, you've been in, in and out before in some sort of role. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't like I say. You, you don't know what happens. You don't know what happens. No, nothing surprises you in football. Nothing. But I've got no reason not to um, uh, to, to say that I won't go back there. No reason at all. Yeah. Um, you know, if the chairman rang me up tomorrow and said, "Look, come and help us out, do this," I'd, I'd, I'd consider it. I yeah. do it because um, you know, as I say, it's uh, I like working for him. Um, I like working for the club. Uh, there's a lot, lot of really nice people at the club, um, and it's a nice place to work. So I'd no reason why why I shouldn't. Yeah, no, I'd love to see it, and I just want to touch. I don't take too much of your time, but I want to touch on okay. Ebbsfleet, obviously. Um, how did yeah. how did the role at Ebbsfleet come around being director of football there? Um, well, the owner. Um, Asked uh, the chief exec to give me a ring to go and meet the owner up in London, um, uh, in his office in Mayfair. So I went up up there to Mayfair and um, sat down with him, and he he um, he sort of he sort of um, uh, put it out to me what what his vision was and what he'd like me to do, and and I I um, I, I liked what he was saying, so I, I decided then then to to go and work with him and uh, I've enjoyed my time there ever since and how, how has it been so far because obviously you had a bit of a tricky start with the transfer embargo obviously signing players is quite a big thing to do your role but they've come through it um, some positive form now as well um, how's it yeah. been and can, can you stay up as well if the season does end 
Yeah, we well when I first went, it, it was the uh, first of January, I think, I got my first uh, day there, and right. I, I brought in five, uh, I think four or five players in straight away, uh, which helped um, the manager because um, we were light on players, um, so they had a massive effect, I think, on or ultimately on the on the way that we we started from January all the way through and. Um, you know the, the the results started to pick up, and um, you know we we, um, we we got ourselves slowly but surely off the bottom of the league. Um, so that's what my role is basically: is bringing players into the club, yeah. um, scouting teams, scouting players. So I I do reports for the teams that we're gonna play against. So I go out and watch them, uh, do their strengths and weaknesses and their set plays and. Like a normal scouting role, yeah. give that to the manager, and he, he relays that to the players and works with them on the training ground according to uh, the way that we're going to set up against them. So it works nicely. It's a it's a something I did at Gillingham anyway. Uh, when I was manager, I did all my own recruitment and getting players in and doing scouting. So it's it's no difference. It's just that I'm not manager there. I'm I'm just director of football. So it's yeah. uh, it's a nice role. I enjoy it. Um, and um, hopefully we 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 can um, finish the season off and stay in in the league. And how, how do you see the season ending? Because obviously there's loads of different options. Obviously none of them are going to be perfect. But um, how no. do you think it think it's got to be done? Well, I hope it's going to be done by us finishing the season and finishing the games. Um, we'd be disappointed in any other way. I think you know, I don't matter how long it takes. I think this season has got to be finished. Um, and the next season, like we go, we'll we'll deal with that when when the time comes. But I think you know they've. I uh, hopefully the league will turn around. It's disappointing that they've done it to the lower leagues yeah. and cancelled their leagues. I think that's that's you know that's terrible anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But um. That's their decision. They've got their reasons for it. You don't want to get involved with that. That's something that they've got to deal with. But I'll be disappointed if um all our leagues have have, have finished. Uh, now I'd be de- really disappointed. I'd, I'd love to say, look, we're going to finish the season, whatever happens, and whether it takes us to July or August or whatever, just get this season finished. And if it means the next season finishes in starts in September and finishes next June, let's let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Yeah. Um, but you know, it might mean then that we might have to have um, like cup games sorted out. Or there's there's certain ways around it you can do it, but. I just hope this season gets finished and the games get played. Yeah, no, I agree. And obviously, we spoke about it before, and I think it's very honest of you, given obviously, if the season was voided, it would almost well, it would confirm the survival of Ebbsfleet in the National League. But in terms, yeah, of, it would do. In terms of when, um, when the summer does come, obviously, I don't know if they're just going to sort of carry on into next season or whatever. But what are your what are your plans for the summer in terms of the recruitment in the role you're you're currently doing? Yeah, well, we 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 you get lists together of players that. Um, You've, you know, been to see a lot of games, even since January, you've been out to a lot of games and watched a lot of plays at different levels. Um, a lot of plays at different levels. So it's just a matter of uh, getting a list together of players for whatever league you're going to be in. So there's a couple of lists that we've got of players that, who can both play, I think, in Conference South and, and the Conference, or the National League as it is now, National League, National League South. Yeah. Um, and ones that you will primarily get for the, just the National League. So, you know, I've, I've got lists of players that you can that can't do anything you, you know, until obviously um, uh, the season finishes or uh, gets started again. Obviously, the players that we got at the club now are doing very well. Um, mm. So that's got to be taken into consideration that who we keep, who we let go. Yeah, true. Um, so you know, it's, it's still a lot of. Um, uh, ifs and buts and uh, what we're going to do with with the squad, but only uh, it's only until we know the timings of everything that we'd be able to do everything, anything. So it'll be all um, all hands on deck, I think. Once uh, once we know what we're going to do, and uh, things will have to be done very very quickly. And I'm assuming the plans for next year is to just kick on and improve on on this campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like obviously we want to. Uh, uh, improve every year, and if we stay in the in the league this year, then the the next step will be finishing perhaps halfway. Um, or if you do anything more than that, it's a bonus. So yeah. you know, it's a it's a matter of building the club now, building the club back up, putting it back on the map. Um, uh, the supporters have been great, stayed with us, and hopefully we can give them a little bit to cheer this year, next year, and the end of this season, so that they can look forward to a, 
a bright future with the club. Yeah, I think I've said to you before, my former football editor is an absolute fan and he's absolutely loving it at the minute. But just finally, um, where do you want to go the rest of your career? Is it a, Do you want to go back into coaching, that sort of thing? Um, do you know, I don't know, Lewis. I, I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing. If if something came up and um, it meant that I'd, I'd be managing and, and coaching again, then, um, you know, I would consider it, obviously, uh, because it's it's in my blood. Yeah. But I, I, I must admit, I've enjoyed this role. I really enjoyed the, the, the director of football role. Um, and like I said, it's, it's not different to what I did at Gillingham um, when I was managing as well. But this, um, I, I have enjoyed it. Um, but I, I'm not, I'm not saying I'd never manage again or I'd never coach again because I'd, I'd be foolish of me because uh, yeah. I love doing that as well. So, uh, but at the moment, I'm I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing and assisting the club in the way that they want me to work. And as long as they want me to do keep continue doing that, I will. Just maybe no, never playing again. You're going to rule that one out. Oh no, no, I never <laughs> play again, Lewis. No, I, I wish I could. I really yeah. do wish I could, especially these days. Yeah. But um, but no, no, it's that's totally gone. Yeah. Totally gone. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Steve, thank you very much for coming on. I really do that's appreciate okay, your time. Liz. Thank you so much. That's all right. No problem. So that's that for this episode of JFG Meeks. I'd like to give another huge thank you to Steve for taking the time out of his day to chat to me. Please do like the video if you enjoyed and feel free to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel as well. Please check out all of our other platforms which can be found in the description and do let us know anyone else related to the club that you think we should get on the show in the future. We do have a few episodes lined up already so keep an eye out for those. See you soon.